Hello, friends. Welcome to noon prayer for Friday, May the 15th. Hey, we're halfway through the month of May. How did that happen? Uh, but, but so we are. We continue to move. Some people feel like it's slow. Some people feel like we're moving quickly. Um, I don't know. I, I vary from day to day, from minute to minute, whether I feel like the time is dragging or rushing. Um, but it is actually, whether we feel like it or not, it is May 15th today. Um, hopefully, hopefully we are past the danger of frost. And uh, if you have plants to put in, uh, you can do that now. That's It's always a, a good time of year. Some people say Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day can be a little earlier, a little later. May 15th is, is generally a, a, a safe bet at this time. If you have not received your email yet with the weekly announcements in it, um, I encourage you to, to go back in your inbox and look for it or keep watching for it if delay has been, um, if delivery has been delayed. But that will contain all of your announcements for this week. And so I will on Sunday just be uh, mentioning them briefly, but all of that information will be there for you. So I hope you will take a look at that and get used to looking in your inbox inboxes for, for that information. And once again, um, though we think we're finally, we've got a pretty good handle on the list serve, which is our method of distributing a, a large amount of emails. If you are not getting our emails and you wish to be on our list, or you think you are and you're not getting them for some reason, please, please, please contact April in the church office. And uh, we're getting much better now at knowing how to fix the problems that come up. So we want to be able to stay in touch with you, uh, especially as we go through these distant times, right? Okay. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue on through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 6, we are, Yoda I am, right? We're in Matthew chapter 6, um, and we begin today at verse 5 where Jesus talks about prayer. Jesus said, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. 
Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Here ends the reading. You know, I read, do not keep up empty phrases like the Gentiles, like some people do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with people over the years that say, oh, you know, I can't pray out loud or I'm even afraid to pray by myself because I don't know what to say, that I will say the wrong words or I won't, or I'll stumble over my words or I won't be very eloquent, right? But Jesus reminds us that our Heavenly Father knows what we need even before we ask. So don't worry about the words you will use. It's far more important in our prayer that we access, that we attempt to make access with God, who is always there listening, ready to hear our prayers. But it's not really an information session for God, right? It's not like God is some giant vending machine and we just put in the right denomination of coin, the right worded prayer that we're going to get what we're asking for. No, it's a relationship. Prayer is a relationship. And God already knows what we need. So don't be afraid or ashamed or reluctant to communicate with God, because God is always ready to hear us. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten or the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Christ, you came into the world as one of us and suffered as we do. As we go through the trials of life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things, that we have no secrets from you, and that your loving grace enfolds us for eternity. In the security of your embrace, we pray. Amen. O God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we come today to number 10 of the 10 different um, aspects of total wellness. Um, and just a reminder that, of course, you know, we don't have time in every day to focus on every one of these aspects of our wellness. We may not even have time in every week to focus on each of these aspects. But perhaps in a month we do, perhaps in a larger sense we do. And by, by focusing on each of these different areas of wellness, we will be able to have come closer to total wellness and which will make us be able to not just survive but thrive during this pandemic but also just in our lives and so the tenth and final aspect of total wellness is environmental and Terry Leib writes this this is another category that might seem to be off limits when you are confined to your house however 
your house is your current environment. A dirty, messy, or overstuffed environment can drag you down emotionally, so now is the perfect time to get organized. Make a list of the projects you've planned to get done around the house or yard. Maybe it's now the time to plant a vegetable garden, and it's the right season, too. But you have never gotten around to it. Prioritize the times on your list and schedule in some time to begin chipping away at it. So what can you do to help to take care of the environment, macro, right? Our, our environment, our world, how can you be good stewards of the earth? And how can you be good stewards of your personal environment? I know many of you have spoken to me about your cleaning out closets and that sort of thing, and that's, and that's great. Um, keep, keep at it, um, get your house in order, so to speak. Uh, because the more you are secure in your environment and comfortable in your environment, it's going to bleed over into all of the areas of your wellness. And I just want to finish by reading Terry's conclusion here. He says, of course, each person will approach the 10 wellness areas differently. And I would encourage you to customize your schedule with activities that are unique to you and your own journey. All right? So... Remember, as you go forward, be taking care of your emotional health, your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your relational health, your vocational health, your financial health, your funnel health, your communal health, and your environmental health. If you can spend some time in your schedule, whatever, block of time you're looking at. If you can spend some time in as many of those areas as you can, you will increase your overall wellness and you will indeed not just survive, but thrive. And that is, of course, what Jesus, our Lord, our resurrected Lord, has called us to do and to have and to live, and that is new life and resurrected life. And that's the life that I wish and pray for, for all of you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.